Now we go into the understanding of module 4 and the contents of module 4 are as follows. So here we will look into sequential circuit design and dynamic logic circuits. Uh, in the earlier uh, topic that is module 3, we had a discussion on combinational circuit design. Right now we are considering the sequential circuit design which is based on uh, one input following the uh, out, one input giving us the output and that output is fed as input to the next circuit. So the basic uh, topics involved in sequential circuit design is it requires memory and the circuit design it is uh, the more important concept used here are the latches and the flip flops. And next you have dynamic logic circuits. So this is almost the same as your uh, CMOS but then extended version of CMOS here with the uh, uh, influence of the capacitor being introduced here. So that is what we will be discussing here in the next topic. Next topic is dynamic logic circuits. So what exactly is dynamic logic circuits? What is it we are going to focus? Introduction, basic principles of fast transistor circuits, synchronous dynamic circuit techniques, dynamic CMOS circuit techniques. So these are uh, taken from the first text that is Sung Mo Kang and uh, it is especially with the ninth chapter and these are the different articles. So we will be focusing on dynamic logic circuit. So we need to understand what do you mean by a dynamic logic circuit. So now we will go to the next topic which is based on charge storage and charge leakage. So already we know the capacitance is going to store and then it would discharge only if the path is provided. So as already discussed qualitatively in the preceding section, the preservation of the correct logic level at the soft node during the inactive clock phase depends on the preserving depends on preserving a sufficient amount of charge in Cx. So whatever is the voltage level at Vx, the same amount of voltage level is stored in the capacitance in spite of being uh, leaked because of the capacitor's discharging effect. Therefore, how do we analyze this? To analyze the events during the inactive clock phase, that is when clock is equal to 0, how do we understand this? De consider as shown in the diagram. So if clock is 0, the entire device MP is inactive and it is an open circuit. So we will assume a logic high voltage level has been transferred to the software during the active clock phase and now both the input voltage V in and clock alright. So assumption we begin with an assumption the voltage level at Vx is high and Ck and V in the clock as well as the input both are at logic low level equivalent to 0. So it is an open circuit so this has a negligent effect on the impact of the next circuit but earlier value has been stored here and it has been found to be logic high. So the charge stored in Cx will gradually it is stored there is no discharge path because it is an open circuit and this has to flow here but it there, it, it, there is no proper discharge path or if it is there it will it, it is based on this status on or off otherwise it will gradually discharge through this path it has been transferred the, it will gradually leak away primarily due to the leakage currents associated with the pass transistor so this has it will search for a path and it will go through this or else by itself it will try to decay so the gate current of the inverter driver transistor is negligible for all practical purposes so whatever the drive uh, gate current you have it is considered as not necessary for us and therefore it is zero. So this is how the charge storage and charge leakage happens. So eventually it will decay on its own. Now we go on to the next topic which is synchronous dynamic circuit techniques. We turn our attention to digital circuit design techniques which take advantages of advantage of this simple yet effective principle. So we will investigate different examples of synchronous dynamic circuits implemented using depletion NMOS, enhancement NMOS and CMOS building blocks. So we will now consider the synchronous dynamic circuit effects on depletion NMOS device, enhancement NMOS device and CMOS device. So we have a general view of a multi-stage synchronous circuit. So you have combinational logic 1, 2, 3, 3 different levels you have. 
the circuit consists of a cascaded combinational logic stages which are interconnected through n mos pass transistors in between you have n mos pass transistors and you have combinational circuits all the inputs of each combinational logic block are driven by a single clock pulse you have synchronous synchronous clock pulse so all the pass transistors are driven by a synchronous clock pulse and there are two 51 and 52 51 alternative paths so as a at a time all these devices pass transistors will become high they will be energized individual input capacitances are not shown but the operation of the circuit obviously depends on the temporary charge storage in the parasitic okay so though the capacitances are not shown but the operation is dependent on the amount of temporary charge stored in the parasitic input capacitance so the amount of input capacitances here what is the charge it based on that the device is going to work further based on this now we go on to the next type family which is dynamic pass transistor circuits as already understood to drive the pass transistors in this since you have the pass transistor combination here it is called as pass transistor circuit since the clock is used it is dynamic so to drive the pass transistors in this system two non overlapping clock pulses 51 and 52 are used So 51 and 52 are two non-overlapping. That is, when 51 is on, 52 will be off. So the non-overlapping -overla property of the two clock signals guarantees that at any given point, only one of the two clock signals will be high. So we will see this in the next slide where we have the non-overlapping clock signals. At any moment of time, one is high. So now we look when clock is zero. When clock is zero. clock 0 is active the input stages of stage 1 when it is 0 when clock 0 is active the input stages of stage 1 and stage 3 are applied through the pass transistors while the input stages of input capacitances of stage 2 retain their previously set values so when you have the clock 51 being active it is 51 being active uh, stage 1 51 and 51 stage 1 and stage 3 are active where stage 2 will retain the old uh, level previous level during the next phase when clock 52 is active so since there are two non overlapping when 51 is on 52 is off when 52 is on the input levels of stage 2 will be applied to the pass transistors while the input capacitances of stage 1 and stage 3 retain their logic levels yes this statement i think is very much simple and it is quite easy to understand so this is the two overlapping non overlapping clock pulses uh, when one is high the other one is low so this allows us to incorporate the simple dynamic memory function at each stage and at the same time to facilitate synchronous operation by controlling the signal flow in the circuit using two periodic signals so this is how the two phase clock pulses are shown now we will consider three such stages 1 2 3 where depletion load n mos dynamic shift resistor circuit driven by two phase clocking so you have a dynamic shift resistor circuit which is driven by two phase clocking 51 and 52 so everywhere this is nothing but your device which is almost like your inverter so inverter is almost with the clock gives you the shift register so it can be shown here you have an inverter you have an inverter if you have two clock pulses 51 and 52 this is now going to behave as a 
shift register. So by introducing two phase clocking scheme we have now made any we have not made any specific assumptions about the internal structure. Now no, combinational circuits logic which was there is now opened here and when you look into this the depletion load NMOS, enhancement NMOS or CMOS can be used. So right now the depletion NMOS has been used. Uh, this is a dynamic shift register in which the input data are inverted once and transferred or shifted into the next stage during each clock pulse. So when you have phi, the information is passed into the inverter and it is stored. When you have another phi 2 coming here, the information which was stored here is now shifted into the next stage. So this is how the dynamic inverter, uh, dynamic uh, shift register is going to work. The operation of the shift register circuit is as follows. During active phase of phi 1, during phi 1, the voltage level V in is transferred into the input capacitance C in 1. Okay. Then the valid output voltage level of the first stage is determined as the inverse of the current input during this cycle. So when phi 2 becomes active, the output voltage level of the first stage, output voltage level of the first stage is transferred into the second stage input capacitance and like this it goes on. So it is stored. Next phi 2 comes. When phi 2 comes, this output which was stored in the capacitor will now shift into the next next stage. So again when phi 1 becomes high again, this is written into the register and this is how the data is stored written red or stored written red stored written red like this it follows and the information is shifted from one stage to other stage. So the maximum clock frequency is determined by the signal propagation delay through one inverter stage. One period of the signal must be long enough to to long enough to allow the input capacitance CI to charge up or down. So this is a representation of a two stage circuit with an example implemented using depletion load NMOS. Depletion load NMOS is considered as the output here and this is uh, a simple shift register extended with a synchronous complex logic okay an expanded version of the same diagram so the extended version is uh, the same thing rather than uh, pass transistor will now be considering the transmission gate so the uh, basic two phase synchronous logic circuit principle in which individual logic blocks are cascaded via clock control switches can easily be adopted to CMOS structures as well. So this can be done with the help of CMOS structures as well. Therefore, the transmission gates are used which is having the fast switching action which is controlled by the clock signal and its com complement because uh, the transmission gate has two complementary uh, signals which are the control signals. Therefore, two phase clocking in CMOS transmission gate logic requires that a total of four clock signals are used. So, as in NMOS based dynamic logic circuits, the operation of CMOS dynamic logic relies on charge storage. Yes, we are all aware of this. So, this is how we have the representation. Next, we understand the basic building block of a CMOS transmission gate dynamic shift register. So we are using the dynamic gate itself but with a CMOS transmission gate. So it consists of a CMOS inverter. This is a CMOS inverter which is driven by a CMOS transmission gate. Now how does this work? When the clock phase is 1, when it is 1, this device is on. When it is 1, 1 becomes 0, 0 bar is 1. 
so both the devices of n mos and p mos in the transmission gate are on whatever is the input it is passed to vx so note that when the input vn is transferred onto the parasitic capacitance cx now the note that the low on resistance of the cmos transmission gate usually results in a smaller transfer time compared to the n mos only switch so there is no threshold voltage drop that that is uh, taken care of the transmission gate by the transmission gate so when the clock signal becomes inactive when it is zero when it is zero there is an open circuit here transmission gate turns off at voltage level and the information is stored till it encounters the next cycle so that is the beauty of the capacitance being used same grounds we now consider a dynamic shift register as i already told you dynamic shift register can be simple it is nothing but your inverter so it shows a single phase cmos shift register which is built by cascading identical units as shown in figure and by driving each stage alternately with the clock signal and its complement so it is driven each stage and you will have two uh, complementary sources so if i show it in a better way i think you will be able to understand so this is your inverter and it is a cascaded structure of an inverter and you have two clock pulses so the two clock pulses are connected with the help of a transmission gate like this so you have transmission gate shown here this has okay this has clock 5 this has clock 5 bar so every stage you have this every stage this is there and the combination of this is single output or you can as well show it like this as yes like this so same implements here also this is how we have the two complementary gate signals clock signals ideally the transmission gates of the odd number stage would conduct during the okay we have this so uh, transmission gates of the odd number stages 1 2 3 uh, this we would conduct during the active clock phase while the transmission gates of the even numbered stages are off because it is if it is zero it becomes one and one becomes zero zero becomes one so always you have when it is an odd, uh, odd number state you will have these kind of inputs so in practice however the clock signal and its complement do not constitute a truly non overlapping signal pair since the clock voltage waveform has finite rise and fall times so the true two phase clocking with two non overlapping clock signals 51 and 52 and their complements is usually preferred over single phase clocking in dynamic cmos logic so for normally two phase clocking with two overlapping clock signals and their complements is usually preferred